The justices have four remaining cases to decide uh, before they end their term. So how have they ranked, how have their decisions ranked on the Liberty Scale? Here to discuss Cato Institute Senior Vice President of Criminal Justice, Clark Neely, is back. Uh, Clark, welcome back. So let's discuss uh, where did the court get it right and where did they go wrong? First, let's start with where they got it right. Uh, numerically, how would you rank the, the best cases, best decisions that we've seen lately? Yeah, I think uh, the, the gun case that you mentioned is a huge win uh, for libertarians. Uh, the Second Amendment and the 14th Amendment protect the right uh, not only to keep a gun at home, which we found out in 2008 in the Heller case that I helped litigate, but also uh, protects the right to carry a gun outside the home. And states like New York and California and Massachusetts and that Hawaii. make people show a special need to carry a gun, that's gone. Now they have to license uh, carrying of guns the same way they license who can drive a car with objective standards. Huge win for libertarians. Uh, and, and the court, you know, y you have assessed that they, they went further than people thought they would. Where else did they get it right? Let's talk a little bit about that main school choice case. Another huge win. You know, uh, this is a, we've, we've discovered in the last couple of years that uh, public uh, schools are not for everybody, and there are many different ways to provide for the public education of children, including outside the traditional public school system. That's what Maine does in the many rural areas in Maine that don't have their own public school system. Uh, for more than 100 years, the state has provided parents with funds so they can choose the private or public school that best suits their children's needs. But since 1981, Maine decided to exclude from that program religious schools just because they are religious. We know that the Constitution doesn't require that, so is Maine allowed to do it? Answer, no. That's discrimination. It would be like saying no schools can participate in this program that are run by women just because they're women. You can't discriminate against people without a good reason. No good reason here. Uh, so Maine has to include religious options in this program. Another big win for liberty. All right. So when uh Justice Thomas writes that gay marriage and contraception are, uh, they were decided on the same, same principles as Roe versus Wade. That's unnerving to people, particularly people in same-sex marriages who don't want their unions annulled. Uh, do you think he was freestyling here or is that the direction of the court? I don't think it's the direction of the court. I do think that Justice Thomas was expressing his sincere view, but the most important thing to understand here is that the Constitution protects rights that are not specifically listed in the text. And some of these are utterly uncontroversial, like the ability to travel around the country, not listed in the text of the Constitution. The ability to put food on your family's table through honest work, not listed in the text of the Constitution. The list goes on and on. The problem is that the Supreme Court has been completely unserious in trying to identify those rights rights that are not listed in the text of the Constitution, but are nevertheless protected. And they've been doing it in a really slap and dash fashion that isn't unpersuasive uh, to most people, including to Justice Thomas. But here's the key. There are very clear textual provisions in the Constitution that make it clear that, the, that there are rights that are protected, even if they are not explicitly listed in the text of the Constitution. And the court has got to make a more serious effort to identify and protect those rights. Is abortion one of those protected rights? Reasonable libertarians can and do disagree. This is both a moral issue and potentially a constitutional issue. The Supreme Court reversed Roe and Casey um, in the Dobbs decision. Reasonable people can disagree about whether that was right or wrong, and I, I am certain uh, that nobody's mind who felt strongly one way or the other will have been changed by that decision. The, the issue will continue to be contentious, including among libertarians who, again, can and do disagree on this very challenging issue. Absolutely. But you know what? You know what's interesting? Uh, they tend to have rational conversations about it. And they, they tend to come up uh, with arguments that are based in reason and not just emotion. And, you know, if that is the future of the debate we have, uh, it's, it's a much brighter one than where we are right now. Clark Neely, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.